Is the United States President Joe Biden running out of patience with Israeli Benjamin Netanyahu as Israel Hamas war completes 100 days? According to reports, while Biden has publicly supported Netanyahu, he and senior officials are reportedly losing patience with Israeli Prime Minister and his rejection of most of the administration's recent requests related to the war in Gaza. Meanwhile, pushing his wartime budget, Netanyahu has said that all ministries must share burden as sharp differences came to the fore. We are learning now that President Biden has not spoken to Netanyahu in the 20 days since a tense December 23rd call when Netanyahu had rejected his request that Israel release the Palestinian tax revenues it is withholding. In addition to the tax revenue issue, Biden and his advisers believe Israel isn't doing enough to allow humanitarian aid into Gaza. Neither are they slowing down their scale of operations in the territory, particularly in the southern city of Khan Yunus. According to sources, it will likely become increasingly difficult for Biden to maintain the same level of support for Israel's military campaign. High tensions were witnessed at the Israeli cabinet meeting over the weekend with Defense Minister Yuav Gallant reportedly storming out of a war cabinet meeting on Saturday night due to an argument with Prime Minister. As relations between the two men leading the war against the terror group Hamas has frayed, according to reports, when Gallant arrived at the Kiria military base in Tel Aviv, he was told by the Prime Minister's office that his chief of staff, Shachar Katz, would not be allowed in as aides were to be excluded. Yet Netanyahu had brought five assistants with him, which infuriated Gallant. Meanwhile, the head of Israel's Shin Bet security agency, Ronan Barr, has reportedly told his staff that he intends to step down after the war against Hamas ends in a show of responsibility for the failures that enabled Hamas militants to carry out its devastating October 7 massacres in Israel. While a former leader of the Shin Bet domestic security force, Ami Ailon, has claimed that Israel will not have security until Palestinians have their own state, he called for the release of Marwan Bargothi, jailed leader of the Second Intifada, to direct negotiations to create one. He said that destroying Hamas was not a realistic military goal and the current operation in Gaza risked entrenching support for the group. Meanwhile, Israeli cabinet ministers have begun its session to approve an amended 2024 budget to account for a sharp rise in spending to finance the country's war with Palestinian Islamist group Hamas. Israel last year approved two-year budget for 2023 and 2024. But the war against Hamas in Gaza has shaken government finances. Israel recorded a budget deficit of 4.2% of the GDP in 2023 due to a spike in fourth quarter war spending and a drop in tax income. Netanyahu's government is now intending some cuts to ministry's budgets while relaxing some. According to reports, as Netanyahu attempted to push his wartime budget on Sunday, the cabinet meeting quickly descended into acrimony with cabinet members trading insults. Education Minister Yuav Kish stormed out of the meeting in a rage followed by Culture and Sports Minister Mickey Zohar. Meanwhile, Benjamin Netanyahu has pledged to sit and deliberate as long as necessary to pass the amended 2024 budget and a decision is expected soon. <laughs> One of the things that has become clear beyond any doubt is that we must conduct this war and it will take many more months. Therefore, we are submitting a war budget. This budget is indeed an annual budget, but it is for a year in which we have a war. This requires us to incur far greater security expenditures than we planned. We are joined by Dr. Helena Ivanov, Associate Fellow, the Henry Jackson Society, live from Belgrade, Serbia. Thank you for joining us on the broadcast. We are looking at the 100 days war between Israel and Hamas militants in Gaza. Ivana, 
According to reports, Biden is running out of patience with Netanyahu over failing to meet its administration's requests in the Gaza war. While we have seen a public display of support by the United States to Israel since the beginning of the war, in the last uh, of the rise, in, in wake of rising civilian casualties in Gaza, how do you see the next phase of war after 100 days? Well, I think that we will overall continue to see the United States supporting Israel. Of course, this is a very difficult situation. A huge number of Biden voters um, obviously have expressed their sentiments towards Palestine and are pressuring the United States to show less support um, towards Israel. Given that this is an election year, we can completely understand why this might be a particularly difficult position for the current President Biden. However, I think that if we look at the official statements made by the United States officials, they have been very clear and very unequivocal uh, in their support towards Israel. They have given us no real reason to think that this support will decrease or change in the coming months. So I think the official U.S. stance will pretty much remain the same, which means Israel has the right to defend itself. The United States will support Israel in exercising this right to defend itself. And of course, the United States will continue to insist that uh, Israel tries and uh, decreases the number of civilian casualties as much as possible. So I, I do not foresee any major changes um, in the coming months. All right, Helena. Also, Netanyahu has proposed a wartime budget with proposals for major cuts across ministries. You know, no sooner did he announce the major cuts in his budget, we saw discontent among his ministers. Two of his ministers storming out of the meeting. And you know, the same happened on Saturday when Defense Minister walked off from another meeting with Netanyahu. You know, Netanyahu has refrained from taking a direct responsibility for the Hamas attack, you know, but is there a growing discontent among his own men? Look, even before the 7th of October uh, attacks and the Hamas-Israel war, Netanyahu's position was really complicated. There were massive protests against Netanyahu and many were displeased and discontent with Netanyahu's rule. So I think some of that discontent that predates the 7th of October attacks is still present and is still out there. And I think we're seeing bits and pieces of that in these latest uh, budget conversations. I think in addition, having budget conversations is always complicated, always difficult, always leads to, you know, Know, disagreements among ministers. And when you add the war context to that, of course, it was reasonable to expect that these conversations were not going to be easy. However, I do not foresee that these difficulties in agreeing upon the budget will, you know, cost Netanyahu his power or really, you know, damage his damage his control too much. And the reason for that is basically that at the moment, there are no viable alternatives. And if you are to trust the polls in, in Israel at the moment, other political parties would just not perform as well as Netanyahu would. So I think whilst disagreements might be frustrating for Mr. Netanyahu at this point in time, I do not think that this discontent can really substantially jeopardize his political position. Dr. Helena Ivanov, thank you for joining us on the broadcast and we continue to track all those latest developments on ground.